Hello everybody, I hope you're doing well. We're going to jump right back into music theory. I am on the Earmaster uh, website and I'm going to go through the next section of this with you and then in a separate video I'm going to show you the one that explains it better but we're going to look at Earmaster first. I think the other one explains it a little better. It has a, a couple more resources than this one does. Um, so we did, we were on notation and we got, we took care of the staff and clefs. And now we're going to look at pitch, sharp, flat, and natural notes. Let's see here. The pitch of a note is how high or low it sounds. Pitch depends upon the frequency of a fundamental sound wave. The higher, the higher the frequency of a sound wave and the shorter its wavelength, the higher the pitch sounds. So higher frequency, shorter wavelength is higher pitch. And the opposite is true. Lower frequency, longer wavelength is a lower pitch. But musicians usually don't talk about wavelengths and stuff. We identify things with note names. A, B, C, D, E, F, and G. Those are all of the natural notes on a keyboard. Here they are. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B. And then if we went down, A, G, F, E, D, C. The white keys on the keyboard are, are natural notes. But in Western music, which is what we're studying, there are actually 12 notes in an octave. So it's divided up into 12 notes. Um, and we represent those with sharps. That's a sharp. A flat. And then a natural. Natural means it doesn't have a sharp, doesn't have a flat. So why do we need a symbol to mean doesn't have one of these? Because sometimes you'll have flats in the key signature and to make something natural, you would use a natural symbol uh, instead of being flat. See here, there's a B in the key signature right there. I don't know why they used D's here. And an E might have been a better example, or at least made this one an E. But let's say you have a B flat. Okay, and it gets played as a B flat that time. And in the next measure, you don't want it to be flat. You want it to be natural. So you put the natural sign in. And then in the next measure, when you play that B, it would be flat again. Natural, the accidentals, which means it's not in the key signature, are only good for one measure, that they go away. Sharp sign means it's a half step higher. And a flat sign means, oops, flat sign means the note is one half step lower than the natural note. <clears throat> Here's where it's a little easier to explain on the other one. Uh, so you'll get it twice, get it explained twice. Every note on the keyboard is one half step from the note beside it, from the key right next to it. So these two, key, these two keys are not right next to each other. This key is next to that note, that key. And then this key is right next to that one and right next to this one. So, But they are not right beside each other. So between each key is a half step. Even right here, this between E and F 
is a half step. There's also one a half step up here between B and the next key would be, whoops. Between B, the next key would be C. There's a half step between them. I'll well, I will explain this in greater, you know, a little differently using the other website. But for consistency, I want to stay on this, this one for now. A G sharp and an A flat. Here we are at G. Raise it half steps, G sharp. If we're at A, you lower it half a step, it's A flat. They are the same pitch. It's called being inharmonic. When notes have different names, but they sound the same. It's inharmonic. Sharp and flat signs can be used in the key signature, which is good. There's the key signature. That means it's good for the entire song. If it's at the beginning of staff, it's good for the entire song until it changes. Pitches that are not in the key signature are called accidentals, like this one right here. See, there's a C sharp in the key signature. That's the C sharp. And over here, that, that sharp applies to this C and to this C and to this C. And it would apply to this one, except that it has a natural in front of it. So that is a C natural. Now, in the next measure, if there's not another natural in it, it would be C sharp again if there were another one. Notes can also be double sharp and double flat. Um, we're not going to worry about that right now, but a double flat is when a note that is already flat is flatted again. A double sharp is when a note that is already sharp is sharped again. And here are their symbols. There's the double sharp symbol, and there's the double flat symbol. And so if you have, if this, um, well, again, we could have done a better example here. They could have given us a better example. Uh, so double flats and sharps. Um, I didn't explain that very well. Double sharps mean you rate means you raise the note two half steps. In other words, one whole step. Double flat means you lower it two half steps. In other words, um, lower it one step. They aren't used very often. Usually they're used to flat or sharp a note that is already flatted or sharped. Note. Do key signatures make more make music more complicated than it needs to be? I'm going to go ahead and answer that. No, they don't. They keep you from having to write sharps and flats all over the place. You have <clears throat> now if you're writing music that is atonal, meaning it is not in a key, you don't use a key signature. Um, but most music that you listen to. Most music is, most Western music is tonal. The key signature comes after the clef symbol. We know that already because you've taken a quiz over it or you're about to take a quiz over it, depending on when you watch this. Um, so after the treble clef, it's key signature. After the bass clef, it's key signature. Those two examples are separate examples. Okay, you don't have two key signatures at the same time. You could have two key signatures in the same song. It can change, but this I just want to make want you to make want you to know that these two have nothing to do with each other right now. I've already explained this to you, but it's in bold. So when a when a flatter sharp is in the key signature, it's good for every note in the song that's on that line or space. So there's a B flat. So all of these B's are flat.
it keeps from having we don't have to write a flat sign in front of every B every time we want to use it in, the, in that particular song. There's an order of flats and an order of sharps, and they go opposite each other. I don't want you to have to worry about that right now. It will make more sense after you understand what a major scale is, and there is a formula to how that happens. So we're not going to worry about the order of flats and sharps right now. 